Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you tuned in to this teaching. We are going to be talking about grief. The title is called Dealing with Grief. Over the past couple months, Gene and I have been to quite a few funerals, too, you know, too many, uh, too many. And people were really too young to go, unfortunately. But I want to give a message and teaching of hope and talk about grief, talk about the grieving process, and most importantly, leave you with peace in your heart, peace in your spirit, and have hope. And our hope comes from the Lord, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. I'm going to use a lot of scripture today. We're going to be going to the Word of God. This is where we put our trust. We put our trust in the Word, which is Jesus Christ, and the Bible is the Word of God. And the sooner people realize this and take it personally and apply it to themselves, there's an answer in the Bible for anything that anybody will ever deal with in life. There's an answer for it when you get into His Word, when you have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. When you talk to Jesus, when the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you, when you give Jesus your life. So let's get started. Please be patient. I'm not going to rush this teaching. And at the end of this teaching, if you've never given your life to Jesus, we are going to pray a prayer of salvation because it is vital. Again, the title is called Dealing with Grief. First and foremost, if you have lost a loved one or somebody dear to you, I'm, I'm sending you my love and my condolences from Gene and I. We love you all dearly for the people that we do know and for people that we do not know. I want you to know, most importantly, Father God loves you. He cares about you and he understands the grief that you are dealing with. So let's go to the book of John, John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Well, I'm asking you today. Do you believe that, that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life? Because he truly is. He died on the cross. He was buried and he rose on the third day. He ascended into heaven. He seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and I right now. And he cares deeply about you. The commentary says, Our most formidable foe has always been death. No person has conquered it. Yet Jesus offers resurrection life. To accept Jesus is to invite resurrection power into your life. When you give your life to Jesus, you have resurrection power. That is so awesome to know this. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 14. Let's see what that has to say. Instead of me turning to it right now, I already have it written down. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 14. This is out of the New Living Translation. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we don't want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died. <clears throat> Let me read that again. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. That is such an encouraging scripture right there. When somebody passes away, this is just our flesh right here. We are triune. We are spirit, soul, and body. So when you go to a funeral and you're looking at somebody in their coffin, 
when they are a born again believer and have given their life to Jesus, they are in heaven with God right now. You're looking at the flesh when you're looking in the coffin. We went to one funeral, and I hope I get this fairly close to what this woman was speaking about. It was so beautiful the way she described that we put our most precious things in a box. And she was explaining precious jewelry and things of value we put in a jewelry box. And when she was speaking about the loved one that passed away, she said, this is our most precious thing that we're looking at that we have put in, a, put in a box right now because the woman meant so much to the people there and she's precious. But that was just her body there. She was a born again believer. So she is with the Lord now. So when you're in Christ, you really have nothing to fear. And if you're an unbeliever, you can give your life to Jesus and know that you know that you know that when you do pass away, you will be present with the Lord immediately. And that is so encouraging to know. And I want to be careful with this teaching because I could be speaking to people that may not be sure if their loved ones knew Christ or gave their life to the Lord. But I want to encourage you that I do believe that our Heavenly Father is so gracious and loving that we as people cannot tell who has gone to hell and be 100% sure really who has gone to heaven. Now, I'm saying this because a person might say all the right things and call themselves a Christian. But if they are living in willful sin and they're living in fornication and they're lying and they're stealing or they're cheating on their spouse, just because they said they're a Christian, those things that I mentioned, you'll go to hell over that. And on the other hand, if you're not sure about your loved one, I do believe that God is so loving and gracious that he does give somebody an opportunity. But why would you want to take that chance when you can know for sure now when you're living holy and living ready to meet the Lord? I love what evangelist Tiff Shuttlesworth talks about. Are you living ready to meet the Lord? If Christ came back, 